I'm going to show you how to make this one of a kind heavy duty desk for about 150 bucks for your gaming setup. This one specifically is about three foot wide, but they can be made a little bit narrower and even wider up to four foot depending on what you need. I'm going to go through everything from A to Z on this project. Just stay tuned in. Give me a like and subscribe if you will. To start, we're going to go over the material cost breakdown here. You can screenshot it to take it in and pick up whatever you need. So these would be the materials you'll use. Uh, I've got uh, four eight foot four by fours, two of these one by two, they come about eight foot long, a two foot by four foot piece of three quarter inch plywood. I'll be using three inch decking screws. That's usually what I like to use, but you can use something else. I like the star heads, that way they don't slip. And then a little bit of wood glue won't hurt. Now, none of this stuff is treated. Um, that way, uh, it won't warp too bad on you and all that. But anyway, as far as the tools go, I have a circular saw, a jigsaw, a sander. You can probably get away with a sanding sponge or something. Tape measure, speed square. Uh, I have an impact. You can use a drill. And of course, a, a bit for your screws, your hammer, drill bits, and a hole saw bit. Specifically, the uh, the one and three eighths inch hole saw uh, it can be a little bit bigger or smaller you just want to make sure that a plug from your gaming consoles or whatever you have can fit through the hole that's made as long as it fit through you should be good to go so a quick tip on buying your lumber at least what i do uh, specifically these four by fours is you want to make sure you don't have the center of the tree inside the end grain uh, and this is what i mean here so of course, when you buy it, you want to make sure it's nice and straight and not all warped up. But when you look at the end grain, you want to make sure that you don't have the center of the tree anywhere in here. Uh, in this case, we've got some big fat uh, growth rings here and it gets nice and tight. It'd be really nice if this, these tight growth rings were all throughout, but we're pretty lucky to get a piece of wood that looks like this. Um, but in this case, the, uh, the, the, the center of the tree will be somewhere over here. And uh, as long as you don't get a cut of the center, you'll be fine. The center is hard and it wants to crack and it'll create problems later maybe wanting to warp it up real bad but uh, here's what i mean so here's a log pile i have these uh these end grains aren't the most colorful but it'll show you what i'm talking about you want your four by four to come from somewhere in this area somewhere on the outside of that center uh, you don't want that center in it and this is exactly why see how the center's all cracked up keep it out of that center and you'll be fine first thing we need to do is make four of these Go ahead and grab your 4x4, put it on your table, your sawhorse, the ground, whatever you got. Get your speed square and some way to mark. And we're going to go ahead and pull a straight line off of here. We're not going to use this end that was cut. We're going to pull a new one off. So about finger width off, I'm going to go ahead and throw a nice straight line on there. Uh, from this point, if, you're, if, if, if you know about speed square, just pull a 60 degree angle here. Pull it on out, pop a 60. Uh, for everybody else, take a tape. Pull off one side here and mark at six inches from the line which you just made. So six inches over, we're here. And we're just gonna touch uh, the mark from here over to the top of that line, however you got. Make sure it lands as it should. All right, this is gonna be the cutaway here. Copy this on the other side. That way, unless you have a band saw and you're able just to rip through it all as one, since I'm using a circular saw, I've got to cut one side, flip it, and then cut the other side. To get these marks on the other side at the same exact place, we're just going to trace down and follow it. Go ahead and touch them together. Let's get it the easiest way. Sometimes I have a hard time with these. There we go. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and zip this off real quick. Of course, in the top and in the bottom, and we'll get back to it. Now what we're gonna do is take and pull 24 inches 
off of this tip all the way over here. So I'm going to get you two foot or 24 inches. I'm going to get your mark there. For the same deal, uh, if you're going to do your uh, speed square here, you want to pull off, get your 60 and mark, or pull your straight line and measure off six inches in. In this case, it's gonna be somewhere around about there. Touch these two together. And then trace this one around till it hits the other side. There you go. And before you cut this, you want to make sure that you're pointing here and you're pointing here at the top like this. You don't want to be like this. All right, you want to be pointing just like that there. So point here and point there. There you go. Two foot long, 60 degree angles. Repeat that 12 more times. Keep in mind that the piece that you cut off and the piece that's left That'll be a 60 degree angle, so that's one less cut you gotta make. All right, so we've got all 12 of our cuts. Go ahead and pull down three and start making your triangles. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some glue on both sides here, put it together, and cinch it in with three screws on each side. Be careful not to get too close to the end or pop out the other side. And there you got it. There's your triangle. Do that three more times, and we'll be on to the next step. All right, so we've got those taken care of. I just want to show you real quick. If you get one of these that has a big gap in it, don't worry too much. Um, it can't be too crazy, but uh, such as this, we have a gap where it didn't close up. Uh, take you a little bit of, you got two options. You can either get some wood putty, fill it in, or take some glue, throw it in that gap there, and then get you a little bit of sawdust off of the wood you cut earlier and sprinkle it in and it'll work as a, a wood filler just like that and wipe it off and whenever we get to sanding it later it should smooth that right on out And there you go. Now let's go ahead and put two of these triangles together to create our next step. You can grab you a scrap piece and throw it down. This way when you're lining these up, the back end stays up, which will be important for this step. First thing we need to do is we have to mark the center on this bottom one here. And I'll show you what I mean or oh, while we're looking for this. So just pull from end to end. It should be 24 inches, and it is. I'm going to mark one foot. Then I'm going to take this square, line it up to it, and I'm just going to mark that center up here. And from this point, we're going to take the tip of this triangle, and we're going to line it up 
with the center of this. We're gonna give ourselves a little gap here, about a finger width gap. That's a good idea for now. Now on this other side, I'm gonna step on up here so we can see better. We can look down in here, we can kind of get it in a decent area while also keeping this point where it needs to be. But the important part now is we have to keep this point at the center while taking the measurements from this point, or let me say this flat area, this flat area. And that should match this side. So if this both sides match and this point is here, with I'd say about a finger gap in between, you should be good to go. And I'll show you here. I have about 24 and 5 eighths over here. We're measuring about 24 and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna put it at a half. Let's see what we got here. You know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna see what I can make here. We do 24 and a half. Let me double check again. Once we get it, we don't want to be moving around too much. I'm actually gonna take it 24 and 5 eighths. And whatever you get on this one, <clears throat> the same thing you want to get on the other one. So this is 24 and 5 eighths from end to end. You'll want to do the same over there while also getting uh, the, 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 the point to that center. 24 and 5 eighths. Now from this point, make sure you don't disturb this. When you've got it exactly where you want it and all the measurements are lining up like they should. You wanna take and scribe. You wanna push down on this right here and you wanna scribe onto the wood, onto the bottom. And then the you wanna scribe onto the top. So I'm scribing onto the bottom now. On both of them this is a little tricky here you want a short pencil or something and you want to scribe on the on the inside you're marking the bottom of this and what we'll do from here is we will cut a notch in both pieces that way they sleeve inside of each other that to create a real strong bond but it's more about looks at this point As you see, we've got some scribe marks there. And then also up here. Go ahead and scribe those and then repeat onto your other set. Make sure that you keep your pieces together and you don't mix them up because they may be uh, unique to each other. Uh, but go ahead and take this up. And now it's for the fun part, but you have to be very aware. We're gonna take our saw here, and we're gonna cut lines all within here, just like so. I'm gonna take a mark a bunch of lines in here and show you what I'm talking about. We should be able to adjust that saw to a certain depth, and then just run that saw all within these and then we'll knock all these wafers out. Be sure that whenever you cut these outside lines here, that your blade stays on the inside of the line. You don't cut the line. You don't cut the outside of the line. You cut the inside, meaning keep your blade on the inside of this pencil. Try to make sure when you cut that you still have a little bit of pencil left on the wood and you don't take all that pencil off on, on the outsides of either one of them. So stay on the insides because we're going to take this notch out. We don't want to be too big. If it is too big, it's not the biggest deal, but it just, your seams won't be uh, as perfect as they could be. These four by fours are exactly three and a half inches. So you'll set your depth on your saw 
at an inch and three quarter. So set it at an inch and three quarter. Now you could take and if you get to an inch and three quarter, you could take and just move it a hair deeper. But an inch and three quarter is the idea. So go ahead and get this thing set at your depth and run your cuts all throughout them. Now we got those cut, take your hammer and see if you can knock these wafers out of here. Try and get your cuts as close as possible to each other. That way your wafers aren't too big and they come out easily. But be real easy. Try not to knock on your, your outside edges. But you can just hit them with a hammer and they should chip right out of there. I'm gonna make a little bit of a mess, but it's all right. You can take a flathead and get in there and work them out as well. Now I will say whenever you're cutting, you want to you want to put on some safety glasses. I usually put on my safety squint, so I'm alright. All right, so get the majority of what you can get out of there. And then what I'm gonna do now, which is not considered safe, but I'm gonna take the saw here, I'm gonna put it in here, and with it on, I'm gonna start kind of cleaning this out. I'm gonna start cleaning out this cavity here and really making it nice without hitting these edges. So I'm gonna work it back and forth and back and forth and get these big areas dealt with as well. Make sure that your base stays on the wood of some sort. So there you have it. I had this notch cleaned out pretty well. It could be a little better if you have a chisel. You can chisel some of this out and clean it up a little bit. But just continue on and hit these other notch areas that you've marked on this set and then also the other set. So we've got these things notched out. Just try to make sure that you have your, your areas cleaned out the best as possible. You can take a hammer and knock down anything that's high, as long as it's not too crazy. But we're going to go ahead and try and fit these things together real quick and see how they made up. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of glue in here. Let's see. Same thing on the other side. Now once again, make sure that you don't mix up your triangles, the ones that you marked, because they will be unique to the one that they were paired up with. Alrighty. Now if you get started and it seems like it's really getting hung up, just. Uh, assess the situation and um, clean it up the best you can. Now I would recommend getting you a scrap piece of wood and putting it on top unless you're using a rubber mallet and seeing what happens here. Pretty daggone good there. Check this other side. That looks good to me. Alrighty. Now we'll do the same with the other one. And get them both together and side by side. Alright, well, there's the legs put together. Uh, that one was dripping a little glue at the moment, but 
uh, it's getting a little late for me. I'm gonna let these dry overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish these things up. All right, we've let them dry overnight. The next step is we're going to shorten these from 24 inches down to about 21 or 22. Either one will be fine. I'm gonna go with 21 inches. So that means I need to pull an inch and a half off of each side. I'm gonna mark it, a nice straight line, cut it with the saw, flip it over, do the other side, and then repeat onto the other legs. I'm gonna pull an inch and a half. Now be sure to, uh, if you have any screws that are in the way, to pick them up and back them up a little bit so they don't get hit. I did strike one right here, so just be aware of that. Now that that's taken care of, the next thing we need are two pieces of 4x4 at 24 and a quarter inch. Now I have our two at 24 and a quarter inch. The next step is we will take and pull up one inch from the bottom or whichever side. One inch, mark one inch on both of these, only on one side. Take your triangle, your square, and throw it on here using your <clears throat> 90 degree angle and pull off of that one inch mark. Don't pull way down here. Make sure you slide it over and you pull off that one inch mark and let it land upwards just like that. So now I'll go ahead and zip these off. Now we have our cuts. Now I did forget to mention, of course, since this is a four by four, you'll want to follow that angle onto the other side so you can cut both sides. But what we have here are the feet for the legs. This slanted side will be the, the front of the desk or the desk that part of the desk that faces you. The, the flat side will go against the wall in, a, in a, a normal situation. So you want to go ahead and figure out what sides or which faces are your most favorable sides if you have uh, some that are uh, a little less, but uh, and figure out which one is your bottom. I'm gonna leave mine just like it is. In this case, It'll fit just like that. You'll want to be flush in the back and you should have a little lip up here. But this will be the front of the desk. That will be the rear. I'll go ahead and slap some glue in here and I'm gonna throw three screws in at an angle on both sides. There you have it, there's the legs there. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and sand these things. And uh, if you would like beforehand, you can fill in any of these holes with the wood putty, whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to sand it and move on. All right, I had these sanded, um, at least to the point where I need them. You can definitely take a lot more time on them and make them look real good and, and fill in any gaps, holes, and whatnot. But I'm giving this to my one of my youngins. 
and all he's going to do is cough and fart on it so i ain't worried about all that but from this point i'm going to go ahead and start on this tabletop this is that four, two by four foot piece in my application i need this to be about three foot wide now if you've got the space for it you can just skip what i'm fixing to do and leave it at four foot but i need to shorten this down just a little bit so i'm going to go and pull the line and cut this off at 36 inches Now that I had this at 36 inches, we're going to mount the top to the legs. And the way we do this, or at least the measurements I'll pull off of it, is I want to make sure that on the rear of the table, that the table top overhangs the legs by about a half an inch on the rear and then on the sides. So just pull the measurement there, make sure you get your half inch. And then I will drop in four of their three inch screws on both sides. So now that we have that put in place, our next step is to put our one by twos on the rear side of these legs for some extra support. You'll take your tape measure and we'll pull the measurement from the outside of the legs here, closest to the table and see what we have. In my case, I have 34 and a quarter. So I'll cut these one by twos uh, to 34 and a quarter. I'll need four of them. Now those are cut, we're going to go ahead and drill our pilot holes for these so that when you put your screw in it doesn't bust the ends open. Uh, I'm going to use a 5.32nd drill bit. It can be anywhere in that, that area, but that's what I'll be using. You want to put it about 2 inches from the end of your cut. So I'm using my triangle coming over here 2 inches to get in the center. And we're going to just pop the hole in there. Repeat that across all of, all of these and then also on the other ends. Now we'll go ahead and attach these one by twos to the back. We can start off by measuring down from the bottom of the tabletop. Measure down here and mark at four inches on both sides. Once you have that mark, go ahead and get this screwed on. Make sure that the end of your one by two is flush with the side of the legs. So it'll be just like this. That pilot hole keeps it from cracking here. So I'll move this on down. All right, from this point, we'll measure four inches down from that and install our next ones. As you go down, make sure you kick these legs in so that the ends match up to the sides. From this one, you wanna measure down from this uh, inside corner here and go down about, so we got about three inches there so we'll go down three inches here mark that on both sides I'll install that and then I'll measure four inches down below that and install that one now that those are cut we're going to go back to the front of the desk and we're going to pull a couple of measurements or marks uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull off from these corners over on both sides about five inches and make a mark right here at the end with that done go ahead and pull up from about the center area here pull up and mark about four inches move on up and mark four then move on back and mark four get you a straight edge and mark a straight line across here you don't have to go end to end but just mark it on across here and you can follow me what i'm saying Let's 
pull this on the cross. And now take your speed square here and bump it up against that with your 90 on this side and touch that five inch mark with it just like that. And then scribe that on over until you touch that mark that's at four inches, that straight line out here on both sides. And then also what I like to do, I like to get rid of these, these sharp corners as well. So I'm gonna pull two inches in and two inches up on both corners. Straight edge it. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut all this off. I'm gonna cut out this area. I'm gonna cut off that corner and that corner. With this, you'll take your uh, circular saw and your run up here. You need to dive it into this line down here. And of course here, don't overcut into your table. Take your jigsaws in and finish those cuts out. Now I have the uh, circular saw cuts made in here, making sure I don't overcut. I've got these corners off. Now I'll take my jigsaw, I'll drop it in here and I'll finish them out, these corners. Now we'll make our way to the back over here we're gonna mark some areas where we'll drill some holes. First thing you'll do is pull your tape across. Obviously this one is going to be at 36 inches, which is how wide I cut it. We wanna find that center. The center on this is 18 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark me a little line here at 18. From that point, uh, I wanna space these holes out uh, about five inches apart. These holes will be for your wiring to go through so they're not all sloppy and everything. But at this we're at we want to go two and a half inches off to the side here and make a mark on both sides of that center mark. We got two and a half on both of them. Now we'll do a mark at five inches off from that. And then another at five from that. Same thing on the other side, your two and a half. Now you'll do a five and a five. This way, we will completely ignore that center mark now. This way your holes will be exactly five inches apart from each other. One, two, three, four, five, six holes. Uh, at this point, go ahead and measure one and a half inches off the edge here. So right where those two marks cross is exactly where you would drill your hole. So one and a half inches in on every one of them. And keep in mind to ignore that center mark. It's exactly where those marks cross. Go ahead and drill your hole with the hole saw. Uh, my size that I'm using will be This is going to be one and three eighths. And there it is. At this point, just go ahead and get your sander out. Hit the tabletop again. If you want to run over everything, just have at it, clean it up. Well, there you have it. You got your holes at the back so you can run your wiring from your monitors, your PC, Xboxes, or whatever you got. Once the wires make it down, just run them along these bars with some zip ties, whatever you have. Take your time and clean it up. Sand it through your holes. You can stain it, paint it. You can hot tool and spit on that thing for all I care. If you will, give me a like, subscribe, give me a comment. Let me know if it helped you out in any way.